All right, welcome back to Empire of the Sun. Um, this is now turn six. Uh, before we get to the combat at hand, let's just try to remember what we did in turn five and what's going on now. It's now turn six, so we got my reinforcements and replacements. Both sides did. Uh, just to show you where I put my reinforcements and replacements, I put them here. These are the reinforcements that are supposed to arrive in turn five, but they got delayed, obviously, um, from because of uh, war in Europe, obviously. Um, so these guys I put in Quadrilane, thinking of making uh, advances into the uh, South Pacific and Central Pacific to try to take, say, I don't know, something <laughs> for progress of the war. Um, speaking of progress of the war, we got to start thinking about what our target should be. I'm thinking Ponope here. That's a free, that's a freebie. Uh, he's also abandoned Wewak and Rabal, so those are two free. Uh, locations we can pick up for progress of the war, so we need the fourth. Just need a fourth, and remember we have the um, in our uh, in our hand we have the feature offensive card, we have the Operation Brewer card, which is uh, Southwest Pacific only for a military event, but it is a surprise attack, so that can be a good thing, especially if we um, we play it towards the end of the turn. Um, we can try to pick up you know a quick uh, island here. Uh, say Guam or I don't know. Ah, one thing you could do, I guess, is maybe Biak and Vogel Cop. Uh, Biak is no longer defended by a land unit, so landing should be okay. Uh, what we could do is we could try to destroy the 2010 2 air unit there, the Lee Air in Biak. If you do that, then the um, obviously the uh, Azoi goes away and uh, he can't do a special reaction because land guy there and that's it. That'll be number four right there. And of course, Vogel Cop is a um, uh, resource hex, which is always good to take because then that takes one away from the Japanese, which is always good for us. Okay, so there's that. Um, let's see what else. Have, what else is going on down here? Uh, up here in the uh, CBI, in Burma, I, uh, Northern India, anyway. Uh, I went ahead and played my first card, it was my turn first. Oh yeah, by the way, before I do that, just to mention that uh, he, we did roll for submarines and I missed. Uh, so it's been night, it's already turn six and I still haven't reduced his hand by one because of uh, submarines. Submarines are doing a very poor job uh, in this game, okay? I All I had to do is roll turn number or less. It's turn number six, so I had to roll six or less. That's a 70% chance of landing that roll. And I didn't land that roll at all. So whoever is in charge of submarines in Pearl Harbor, I think you know his name is uh, you know he's the Com Sub Pack Commander of Submarine Pacific. I don't know he should be fired <laughs> and replaced because this is not it's not turning out well. Anyway, uh, just to show you also what I played for the first card, I played the Axiom card, which is this one right here. It's a, it's a two card, but I use it for the event uh, in in. The, or any Commonwealth or a joint HQ. I activated the SEAC headquarters and I did all these kinds of attacks. So the idea of stripping away his uh, air, uh, his uh, uh, naval and air naval uh, cover here in um, DACA, uh, uh, you know, so to, to make it more vulnerable to air attack. Right now, I don't have the land units to try to to try to take it uh, just like that. So you know, all we can really do is just keep um, pounding on with our air and naval units until we can because uh, you know it's not good this guy's cut off and right now um, those guys have been flipped uh, in the previous attrition phase obviously because they're out of supply so it'll it'll be interesting to see if the Japanese can take that obviously if the Japanese take that then he controls on, uh, northern India and then as I mentioned before this guy starts to move to the left but fortunately, it moves only one space to the left uh, every every end of turn, unless he plays one of those Gandhi cards that allows another 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 um, uh, step. So until that happens, we're okay. And of course, if we should ever at any point take a hex in northern India, so, uh, when this starts to go down, then um, then this whole cycle begins all over again. So that's 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 where that is. Um, so I'm not feeling too bad about this, even if this falls, I'm not feeling terribly bad about it. Okay, so anyway, so what, what what's going on? 
Uh, well, first of all, um, first of all, I forgot to take a, a, a British a naval replacement uh, during my turn, turn six, and I I took it on the Indomitable. I flipped it. Okay, so it, it used to be a five twelve two, now it's a ten twelve two, and then I did all these attacks. Um, I put Z and Q because C and D are boring, so I just did that. So there are four battles going on: A, B, Q, and Z. So let's let's step through the um, let's step through the the combat. He was able to make um, uh, he was able to make his intelligence die roll. He rolled a two, so he was able to do that. And then uh, at battle A, it was ten against fifteen, ten of mine against fifteen of his. Okay. Um, uh, right here, 10 here and 15 there, and this is just a pinning attack. So I rolled a 1. He rolls a 1, so that's uh, both quarter results, which is a whole lot of nothing. Uh, in battle B, up here, okay, uh, it's 4 against 4, so it's just 4 against this long range SIAC bomber. Okay, so. The six and an eight, so I roll a quarter. I think I, I, that's a half result, if I'm not mistaken. He rolled a full result, but also no no effect. Okay, it's uh, no, okay. And finally, uh, battle Q down here is sixteen, um, six here and ten there, with the idea of uh, trying to destroy the. 11, 10, 2 air units, so it's got 16 against 19. I have a plus 1 because of a US air unit involved. So I rolled a 6, which is a 7, which is a full result. He rolls a 4, which is a uh, half result. It's a half result. So that means I'm able to put um, hurting on him. I, I, I'm able to put 16 hurt on him, and he puts a 10 on me. So let's see, so he flips. Okay. So I'm able to flip the uh, undamaged air unit. That's that's this one over here. Okay, that used to be a full unit. Now it's a half unit. And then now he uh, he flipped my 13th Air Force unit. So that's um, let's see. Oh yeah, this one. This used to be a 10 10 2. He's just running right here. See him? Uh, the 13th Air Force uh, uh, short range uh, uh, air unit. So that's done. He flips that. And so finally, in the end, 17 versus 10, 7, I, I attack um, this thing, 17 factors, 10 plus 7, 17. So I rolled a 6, he rolled a 6. That's a full result for both, if I'm not mistaken. So that eliminates his cruiser. And um, he is... Not able to hurt me at all because it's a seven, and I don't have any any response to any any anything that hurts, uh, anything that um, that that would be hurt by that result. Okay, he needed a critical hit; he didn't get it. All right, so that's it for this combat here. Um, again, it's you know not much, but I wanted to get uh, turn three go, uh, turn three, turn six going, and to tell you what's what's happened since then. And so there's the first card I played combat. Okay. Oh, I should show you just real quick. Tell you. Maybe show you the cards I have in my hand. Okay, let me just do that. Let me just pull this out. So it's all flipped. So please be patient as I do this. It's not the fastest thing in the world here. All right, just to show you what I have, I've got this thing. I've got Operation Chronicle, which is a uh, it is a little really neat cards which um, allows you to uh, um, if you land on an occupied island. Automatic auto flips the other islands around it that are unoccupied, uh, which is really good in the South Pacific in the, uh, in the in the Solomons. That's really cool, and maybe even the Marshall Islands. Those, but we we we've already taken those, so this is not useful for that. The bonus doesn't help us, but you know it's still an H any HQ. It's still logistic value three, so it could be useful. Uh, we have the Anakim uh, operation in Burma, so that's. Uh, you know, it's good for any HQ, but the limitation is only air and ground units can be activated. Um, up here in India, it doesn't really matter. We, we, we don't, there are no naval units for us here. Uh, here we have, um, this is going to be interesting, the uh, Prime Minister Curtain card, which allows us to get an Australian replacement. 
Um, so uh, it says here that Australians get two ground replacements, must be used immediately to bring Australian ground units from reduced to full strength or from eliminated tile to reduced strength or full strength, which are placed in any friendly in supply Australian port. Oh, wait, the, that's the guy if I, if I, if I bring it up from, from the dead. Um, any unused replacements are forfeit. Um, I'm wondering if I could use that to flip this. It's out of supply, but I think I, I cannot, but I'm not sure. That would be an interesting thing. If you guys know, uh, let me know in the comments. I'm, I'm, I doubt you can, but it doesn't say here it has to be an in supply that the guy who's in um, who's receiving the replacement has to be in supply. All right, so this one's our, our, our next um, uh, card, which is the Halsey Carrier Raids. It's uh, only a two card though, so not, not very long range, uh, but it's pretty powerful. Uh, it's an eight activations on Central Pacific card. And it allows us to, it, it says that if you, if you get a um, aircraft carrier that participates in the Battle of Japanese Islands Hex, the Japanese have to discard a card. It's nice, but unfortunately, we're not nearly anywhere close to Japan. So what would be cool is if, is if I hung on to that. I think that would be a bad, would be a terrible card to hang on to in the, in the FO. Uh, if I played, assuming I played the Brewer uh, Operation Brewer card, which I should, because eventually, because that's you know that's a surprise attack. That's always a nice thing to have. Um, we have this the Victor Plans MacArthur liberates the Philippines. It's a two card, but fairly powerful. Six activations on Southwest Pacific, and finally, this card, which is on the surface quite powerful, but not really, um, not for us anyway, because it's the Iwo Jima card. Uh, normally, it's eight activations against Central Pacific. HQ, which would be cool, that's 11 activations in total, but you got to have an allied ground unit making an amphibious move to a hex within 10 spaces of Tokyo. Um, otherwise, you don't have to use it as an OC. I I think we we could actually use it as an OC, as an, uh, sorry, as, a, as, a, as an event card. If we were to do the landing, say, in, I think Guam would be cool. Guam would be within 10 of uh, Japan, uh, Tokyo, right? One. Um, Tokyo's up here, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, it, you can do that. Uh, or even say eight, nine, ten. Say here in um, Ulithi, that could that could work. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, so Ulithi will work. So that, that we could use it, uh, but we'll see. Um, what could happen, I suppose, is that we could hang on to that for, for instead of uh, the carrier raids, maybe we can hang on to that one, um, the Wajima card, uh, so that we can uh, um, grab a, a bomber base, say we can grab a Marcus or Saipan or Tinian or those those, those, uh, those those islands for progress of the war. Um, although it's a 9-12 uh, half-armed garrison, it's going to be tough. You land uh, two full strengths. Um, um, uh, you know, 12, 12 units or 22, 12 units. Uh, the Japanese have a very good chance of taking at least three steps. Going to annihilate him, but it's it's going to be costly with at least three steps. So you know, you keep doing that, and you you know you're going to treat your ground strength pretty badly. But anyway, so that's that's where that is. That's where we are right now. Um, oh, did I show the cards? Yet? Uh, did I show all the cards? Did I show? Yeah, I did show all the cards. I think. Yeah, I did. So yeah, so you've seen all the cards, and of course we have the Operation Brewer card, which is a surprise attack card in the FOQ. So anyway, um, next up will be Japanese card play, and uh, I'll see you in the next video then. Thank you very much.